What's up guys, my name is Goat. Today, we are going to be continuing our incubator series with the second video, okay? It's going to be titled, Trading Tools and Essentials, Demystifying Options, okay? So in this video, all right, we are going to be discussing what options are in the stock market, how we use them, okay? We're going to be understanding why it is that we use options and why they yield more efficient profits, as opposed to saying, hey, let's throw a couple hundred dollars or a few hundred dollars or even a few thousand dollars at some shares. It doesn't make any sense to be using all that capital when you can just purchase an option contract and look for the same profit. We're also going to be talking about using TOS, standing for Thinkorswim, okay? And also when to use Robinhood. Now, TOS is definitely the brokerage platform of choice for us, okay? We really don't like Robinhood. We kind of have beef with Robinhood, but there are times where using Robinhood is okay all right we're also going to be talking about some other important aspects regarding trading that's to be covered in the video but guys i really just I, I want you to completely zone everything else out because in the video we're going to be discussing everything that demystifies the entire complex world of options i'm sure you've either heard about it or read about it your friend told you about it your dog told you about it whatever it may be i want you to blur all of that out because today is going to be an experience, obviously, around removing all of the unwanted uh, or unyielding information about options contracts. Okay, so again, welcome to the second session of our training journey. And in this session, I'm going to be doing my personal best to remove the mist around options, really making the complexity of options a lot easier for you to digest and by the end of the video you should feel a lot clearer about options as a whole okay we're gonna break down options including the strike prices the expiration dates the premiums what the risks involved are okay and I know this probably sounds like mumbo-jumbo or, or gibberish or whatever language you don't understand right now but by the end of the video I promise it's going to be way way clear Okay. Let's start with what an options contract really is. All right, so an options contract is a financial agreement that gives the holder the right, not the obligation, okay? so no one's forcing you here, but the right to buy or sell a specific asset, like a stock in this case, at a predetermined price, which is the strike price, which we'll talk about, don't lose me yet, within a set period of time, from now until the expiration date. Okay? And there are two main types of options. Options, in an easy, easy way to explain it to you, okay, are like giving you the right to be able to buy something cheaper than it actually is, or really at a set price. For example, right, if there's a grocery store near you, well, I mean, I hope there's some kind of grocery store near you if you're watching right now, but let's just say there's a grocery store near you, and you make a deal with the people at the grocery store, the owner, whoever it is, and you say, I want to buy eggs at $3 a dozen for the rest of my life. Well, let's say they give you that deal. Okay, now you have the right to buy eggs for $3 a dozen for the rest of your merry life. In actuality, you have just purchased what's called an options contract, meaning that you have the option, but not the obligation, to purchase eggs at $3 a dozen. Now, what happens when eggs go to $5 or $6 a dozen or $9 like they did last year, right? Well, that options contract becomes very, very valuable because you would be the only person allowed them to buy at $3 because you have a contract that allows you to do so. So somebody else might wanna buy that contract from you. Actually, everyone else would wanna buy that contract from you because you have something that not everybody else has. But let's say the price of eggs was $2. Well, that $3 option contract that you have, it's worthless because why would they wanna buy eggs for $3 when they can go out to the grocery store and buy eggs for $2, right? Doesn't make much sense. So an options contract is valuable only when it makes sense, when it gives you some kind of beneficial right over the current price, okay? Now, what I explained was a call option contract, something that appreciates in value as the underlying asset goes up, all right? The other side of that is a put option contract, where it gives the holder the right to sell the asset at the strike price, okay? So on the flip side, Right? If you had a contract that allowed you to sell eggs at $9, that would be very valuable right? because the current price of eggs is around $2 or $3 a dozen. 
So if you're able to sell them at nine, a lot of people are going to want that, specifically farmers, right? They're going to want the right to be able to sell eggs at $9 a dozen because that means great profits for them. However, if the market price for eggs was $10 in that case, well, then your option contract is not actually that valuable at all. Because why would I buy something from you that gives me the right to sell eggs at $9 when I can just sell them for $10 on the open market, right? So again, call and put options, they both go for different things, but they're only valuable in comparison to the current price of the asset. Now, just to demystify the whole thing, basically, we buy call options when we think a stock is going to go up, we buy put options when we think a stock is going to slide down. Okay, and the further it slides down, the more worth it or the more this put option contract appreciates. And the higher the stock goes up, the more this call option contract appreciates. It. Okay, but options can really be bought and sold in many markets. Okay, they're, be, they're already being sold in many markets at the millions of contracts in volume daily. Okay, sometimes billions. Yes, that many people trade options contracts. They're actually worth it. We use options themselves and the change of their price to really make a profit. So same thing, whether we buy a call or a put, we're looking to buy that contract really cheap when no one wants it, or maybe people want it, but they just don't want it that bad. And then we sell it when everyone wants it, when it becomes very valuable, okay? So calls are bought when we believe the stock will go up. Puts are bought when we believe the stock will go down. It's honestly quite simple. How they work is more complex, but in terms of what you need to know as a beginner, that's basically it. We buy calls when we think the underlying asset is going to go up. We buy puts when we think the underlying asset is going to go down. Now, how do the call options actually make money? So you go out, you purchase the call option contract. It gives you the right to buy the underlying asset at the predetermined price. That's what's known as the strike price. Okay, we'll talk about that. If the price of the asset goes up, you can buy it at a lower strike price and then sell it at the higher market price. For example, Apple stock is currently trading at about $177. If you have a call option contract for $100, that's worth some serious money. Why? Because let's say I bought that contract from you. Now I can buy 100 shares of Apple at $100. And then I can turn around in two minutes and sell those 100 shares for $177 each. Now I just made $77 times 100, $7,700 buying your contract. Okay, I hope you charge me at least $7,700 for it, right? But that is why call options contracts go into profit to begin with. We pass the strike price, but you still have the ability to buy at that earlier, cheaper price. Now, put options are on the other side, right? Apple is trading at $177. Let's say I have a put option contract for $300. That's amazing. That means I can sell 100 shares of Apple at $300. My contract says I can't. Right? So I can literally go buy 100 shares of Apple for 177 use that contract to sell all 100 for $300 each. Okay, Might be hard to understand right off the jump, but basically these call and put options contracts, if they are very valuable, okay, they can yield a lot of money to the person that ends up using them. Okay, again, for the put, if the price of the asset drops significantly below the strike price, you can buy it at the lower market price and sell it at the higher strike price. In this example, you can buy Apple at the current price and then sell it for 300 and you make a profit from the price difference. Now, this is the TOS platform, just showing you guys a screenshot here. Okay, we have calls on the left where you see calls at the top here and then all of these are calls. And then we have puts on the right where you see all of these are puts. Uh, and during this screenshot, we were looking at Apple at an underlying price of 115. So yeah, this was a while ago, right? Because Apple was super, super cheap at this time. But we look down here, okay? Where it's highlighted black is the out of the money puts, okay? Meaning that they are out of the money. Their strike prices, okay, are beyond what the stock is currently at. So for puts, that means they're lower. For calls, that means they're higher, all right? And what's shaded purple is in the money, ITM, in the money meaning that the strike price is underneath on calls over on puts. Now, I don't want you guys to get too flustered right now about OTM and ITM and ATM, which is at the money. All you really need to know here is that the ones shaded in black here, the out of the money calls and puts, are going to be the ones that are cheaper 
to buy and a lot higher risk whereas the ones in purple are going to be much more expensive but at a lot less risk okay so that's what i want you to pull from that here's a robin hood screenshot okay where i've labeled some of the pieces of the options contract with regards to the expiration date that we have here the premium price okay then listed in a single file so we have out of the money we have at the money that's where the current price is you can see here share price is 5148 it's right at the money and then you have in the money which is underneath the current price on the other side with the puts very similar expiration date here this is the strike price okay so this is always going to be the strike price in the next screenshot i'm going to be showing you an example of an alert it'll make a lot of sense but then we have in the money on top right for puts out of the money is on top for calls and then we have at the money and then we have out of the money on the bottom for puts okay remember in the money is always going to be slightly more expensive because the risk is way lower out of the money is going to be slightly less expensive because the risk is way higher okay here we are strike price is the fixed price at which the owner of the option can buy or sell the underlying stock okay so for example here we have a robin hood screenshot the strike price for mara m-a-r-a that's the ticker symbol and the strike price on this contract is 23.5 whereas i've pulled an actual alert okay from our group that was given september 1st and here you can see that I have a call contract for NVIDIA at a strike price of 492.5. Okay, the rest of it is the expiration date, me telling you it's a day trade, the price to buy it at, the stop loss, et cetera, et cetera. We will get through all of that, but I just wanted to show you an example here first. Okay, the very next thing is the expiration date. The expiration date is the date in which the option contract expires and is no longer valid. Okay, so if, if you made that deal with your grocery store to buy eggs at $3, they're not going to do that forever. Come on. They're not stupid. They're going to tell you, all right, you know, you could do this for the next month or two months or six months or whatever it is until the date ends. Okay. There is something called time decay in options contracts. Okay. Specifically, it's called theta, right? Once you're in the language, you'll trust me, you'll understand what theta is, but it's basically just time decay. This means that the closer your options contract gets to its expiration date, the less it'll be worth. Okay, if nothing else changes. Because the longer the date is sitting for your options contract, the longer time you actually have to use it. If you pass the expiration date, it becomes worthless, right? So what's the point of using it after the expiration date? Nothing. That's why the closer you get to that expiration date, the less it becomes to be worth, all right? Now the premium is basically just the price of an options contract. It's really not that deep, all right? You find the total cost of one full contract position by multiplying the per share premium by 100. So for example, with this exact NVIDIA play, we look at the premium, it says $1.36. The actual option contract will cost you $136, multiplying this by 100. Why? Because each contract gives you the right to be able to buy NVIDIA at 492.5 100 times. So for 100 shares. So when we use this example, if the per share premium is 139, for example, you would multiply it by 100 to get $139. So buying one contract of that option would cost $139, okay? Now, there are many different option strategies that you can implement using options, okay? For example, scalp trading. This is really fast trading, okay? When we trade, we buy something, we sell it 10 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds later. That's called scalp trading like you're scalping the price you know then we have swing trading swing trading is like when you let an option contract sit at least one night okay you let it swing overnight all right so in this case i buy it today maybe i sell it tomorrow or the day after i buy it on monday i sell it on wednesday i buy it on monday i sell it next monday okay it could be anything straddle strangle okay where i don't want to throw you too far in the mix i just wanted to give you some examples of some other different kinds of uh, strategies Straddles and strangles involve either buying or selling uh, a call and a put together to get a totally different outcome. Again, we'll, we'll talk about that. That's definitely in the course as well. And then vertical spreads, which is what we're really focusing on. That's our bread and butter, and we're going to get to it. But in monetary, we like to focus mainly on swing trades, scalp trades, and specifically vertical spreads. We try not to make anything really too complicated. That way, it's, it's easier for our beginners to get a hang of it. 
Now, why options, okay? When we trade options, since there are many more variables that affect the price of one position, the asset is more volatile, but it's also more leveraged, okay? That's, that's really what brings our, our bread and butter in, is that leverage, okay? Instead of spending money to buy 100 shares of NVIDIA, we could just buy one you know, call options contract, and we would make the same money as if we were holding 100 shares of the asset. Obviously, it comes with some risks, right? The asset is more volatile. There are more variables, okay? But that's what we get in exchange for trading it so cheap. Basically, what this means is that we can use a smaller amount of money and get higher returns as opposed to just trading the regular shares. All right, that's what we want to know from this. Now, I made a, a list of some pros and cons for, for the brokerages. So, for example, we have Robinhood. We're talking about some features and the pros and cons. First of all, on Robinhood, you can have a margin account and a cash account. Now, that's one thing I want to delve into specifically. A margin account is an account that lets you borrow money from your broker, meaning you can open a trade and you can sell it. Technically, it takes a day to get your money from that sale. But if you have a margin account, your broker will give you the money right away, meaning you don't have to wait. Okay. On a cash account, you will have to wait to get your money. So let's say you bought an Apple contract for $100 and then you sold it for $150. If you have a margin account, you'll get it right away. You'll get that whole 150 right away. If you have a cash account, you'll have to wait until tomorrow to get your $150. So on a margin account, you can use it again right away, but on a cash account, you gotta wait until tomorrow to get it back. The other side of that, obviously there's a, there's a negative to each of these accounts. On the margin account, you're limited to three day trades per five days. Meaning, specifically, the trades that you buy and sell the same day, you're limited to how many times you can do that. Three times within a rolling five days. Now, why would you wanna buy and sell something the same day? Because guess what? With an options contract, it can go really up or really down the same day, right? So if you wanna get out of that position, you can go ahead and do it, but it counts as a day trade. So if you're in a margin account, you can get your money right away. You don't have to wait that 24 hour period to get your money, but you can only have three day trades per five rolling days. With a cash account, you gotta wait to get your money, but you can day trade as many times as you want, okay? So ultimately, this comes down to figuring out whether it's more of an advantage to get your money right away or whether it's more of an advantage to trade as many times as you want. And nine times out of 10, a cash account is going to make sense if you are a day trader. However, because we play a lot of vertical spreads, I would say get a margin account because you can only play spreads on a margin account, okay? In the past, we've done a lot of day trading. I wanna channel all of our energy now to option spreads, and that's gonna require us to get a margin account. Now, the best scenario is if you have more than $25,000 in your account. If you have more than $25,000 in your account, you can have a margin account and you can trade as many times as you want. So if you have more than 25,000 in your account, you can have a margin account, you can play all the spreads you want, you can also play all the day trades you want. No one's gonna tell you anything. But, right, if you don't have $25,000, you're gonna have to pay attention to how many day trades you're using. The TOS does a good job of letting us know how many day trades we have left. Now, there's paper trading, which is trading without using real money, basically practice trading. Robinhood does not have paper trading, okay? One of the pros of Robinhood is that it's very intuitive and beginner friendly. The UI or the user interface is very simple. It's all an app, it's very clean, everything's green and white and red, like it's pretty simple. Another pro is that it's commission free trading. This is actually set to change later this year where they're gonna start charging small commissions, but as of now, it still remains to be commission free. Now the reason we put that in quotes is because they use a separate system, okay, um, using payment for order flow, which is something kind of sketchy. We're not gonna get into all that right now. It's a little bit too early. I don't wanna throw too much information at you, but basically we can say it's commission free, okay? The other pro is that it's easy to get started and just about anybody can use Robinhood. I actually think it's a great app for non-traders because if you really don't trade that much, you don't really need much and it looks really clean. Now some cons, there's slow execution. It's, it's kind of hard to trade on Robinhood because everything kind of takes forever compared to TOS. TOS is very fast but also doesn't look as nice, so, and we'll talk about those cons. Um, the other con for Robinhood is that it's a limited interface. It's on your phone, 
Yes, they have a website version. It's kind of wonky though, okay? There's only so much you can do with it. You can't really see charts and stuff like that, but we'll talk about Thinkorswim, okay? Now, the features here are simple. There are margin accounts and there are cash accounts, which again, telling you right now to focus on the margin accounts, that's how you're going to be able to play our spread positions. There's also paper trading on Thinkorswim. There's no paper trading on Robinhood, okay? Paper trading on Thinkorswim, all right? Once you sign in, you can choose either paper or live, and from there, you know, you can practice. Now, one of the pros is that you have advanced trading tools. There's something called the Active Trader Ladder. It makes everything super simple. You can watch my specific video about the Thinkorswim setup, and that should show you exactly what that's all about. Another pro is that there are advanced order types. Okay, with Robinhood, there are really only two or three different order types, and we'll talk about what those are, but on Thinkorswim, we have a lot more of those. Um, there's plenty of scanners and indicators on Thinkorswim. There's not really much in the form of technical analysis or charting on Robinhood. Another pro for Thinkorswim is that it's the fastest execution time of any broker. All right, so keep that in mind. Um, the reason why it's the fastest is because you pay for it. So Thinkorswim is not commission free. You do pay a commission of 65 cents per option contract. Now we talk about the cons, okay? So the complexity and the learning curve. TOS is pretty complex, which is why I've made several videos to help make it easier for you. All right, another con is that the mobile app lacks extensive features. It's not meant to be used as the mobile app, okay, Thinkorswim. It's primarily to be used in front of a desktop, and I will tell every trader this. If you can get in front of a computer, please do it. It's so much better than trading on your phone. That's, you know, just me. So take my advice. I recommend it. All right, now when to use each platform. Um, in the video, you're going to understand how to use both of the platforms. It's important to know the time and place to use each one. If you're on the go, let's say you're flying or something like that, and you need to be confident in your trading, honestly, using Robinhood would make a lot more sense. Okay? I have Robinhood downloaded for that reason. Sometimes I like to trade on the go. Highlight on the sometimes because I really dislike it, but sometimes there's a trade that I really want to get into, and I'll have no choice but to use Robinhood to get in. But when you're able to sit down in front of a desk, like a normal trader and do your main trades it's important to use the best and the fastest platform which is TOS or Thinkorswim it has the most resources honestly I question any legit trader that doesn't use TOS it's kind of weird if you don't okay let's talk about some of the capabilities in depth uh, I'm not gonna go through these like super super detailed but you know I listed them here for you guys so we have advanced charting tools okay um, we have some options trading tools. We have paper trading, okay? And, and this is something I'm excited about. Thinkorswim paper trading platform is actually really good. It enables you to practice trading strategies with virtual money. It's an excellent way for you to test ideas and strategies without risking your real money. We have scan and filter tools, okay? So you can create custom scans based on specific searches that you want to send out. Again, this is all slightly more advanced stuff. And there's alerts and notifications. So Thinkorswim enables you to set up a price and event alert. Um, you can receive notifications via text, via email, uh, or within the platform like a pop-up. And that just helps you stay more informed about the market. There's a lot of tools to be used on Thinkorswim. Now the guide, okay, when you want to use the advanced charting, uh, basically you select the asset that you want to analyze and then you click on the charts tab. And then from there you can customize your charts. You can add different indicators, um, different EMAs, you know, add the RSI, a lot more stuff that we talk about that's technical. Again, I don't wanna throw you completely off the wagon here. Um, but for options trading specifically, you can access the options trading platform by clicking on the trade tab. And here you can select the options that you wanna trade. You can also add them to a watch list and then go over to the charts tab and use the active trader, which is the best tool on Thinkorswim. Again, my video highlights this completely. To use the paper trading, uh, you just go to uh, the first part where you're signing in and then you can choose either paper money or live money and then from there it's very simple you click on the paper you go in you go into the monitor tab then you just follow the regular rules as if you were regularly trading go to the trade tab find the ticker you want to trade the strike price then filter out the expiration date etc etc okay and you can set up alerts by right clicking on a chart uh, or something in your watch list and then you just select create alert and specify the conditions hey alert me when Apple passes 185 or alert me when Microsoft drops below 320 or whatever it may be and then you set up how you want to receive that alert and then it alerts you okay now how to follow our alerts very very simple same screenshot of Nvidia here okay 
right here i've got the strike price okay highlighted so it's the 492.5 so when you're getting let's say you just got this message it's 9 52 a.m you just got this message we see the green circle that means buy we make it very simple green circle yellow circle red circle green circle is buy yellow circle is i'm starting to sell out of it red circle is i'm completely out of it then we have a call this tells you it's a call option nvidia this tells you the ticker nvda all right 492.5 the expiration date 91 okay that's telling you what the expiration date on this specific option contract is the day trade i'm telling you we're probably going to sell this pretty soon it's going to be a same day sell the premium okay where i'm telling you how much i'm buying it at and the suggested stop loss which is how much we're going to get out at if this doesn't work out in our favor all right so basically a little recap you're going to see a lot of these when when you first get into the group now this wraps up this specific section on trading tools and essentials we've covered options trading the platform comparisons and strategies within those platforms i want you to put this knowledge to use on your trading journey but before we get into that i do want to show you a couple of things okay within our side so i did want to show you just a brief history of what you can find in our options alerts so for example you'll see today at 9 38 i sent out this call debit spread on jp morgan chase uh, at 1017 i also sent out a call debit spread on google okay and i'm specifically telling you exactly what you're buying and how to enter this trade again there's a whole video that we made on spreads uh, up above you will see a couple of examples of some day trades that we've also taken for example this nvidia play okay that i highlighted and i recently just put in the video you can see it play out here where you know we ex start exiting this position at 146 we do another exit at 155 ride it all the way until we finally get out of it at 190 okay so start at 136 dollars and we turn into 190. now you can see some other examples of that happening here okay with meta we have entering at 151 then taking profits at 162 175 again I'm, I'm usually buying a lot of contracts at once so i like to sell them off in pieces as we continue on you can see our final sell for meta here okay ultimately when we go to our trading recaps you can see exactly what our performance is day to day all right so for example this is the wednesday recap where we've just played one nvidia trade and that one was all done and the final result of that trade was a 46 percent up sell but then we also yesterday had a trade for qqq final result there was 41 percent you could see the friday recap okay we don't always make money you know you'll see some losses that we have down here for sure but the majority of our trades end up being very, very good. And we do well for the most part. Okay, again, we boast a 90% win rate. That is an average accumulation over the last three years. And you can go to our recap here and check it all out and see what our performance has really looked like over time. Again, you're gonna see a lot of great gains throughout the course of you know scrolling through this recap because there's a lot that we do. I would say every day we get anywhere from one to about five or six trades as a whole just depends on how much i really want to trade that day there's some other things for example you know when you go into uh, a play here and let's say you know you see me put out that i'm buying meta at 151 there's a lot of competition to get in at 151 okay so if the price runs up on you and it's now 154 that's okay i would say anywhere that's within five percent either five percent up or five percent down okay of this play means it's still okay so if this play runs up to 158 it's still fine if it runs up to 159 it's still fine okay now if it drop if it runs up to like 165 that's a little bit different now it's more than five percent up so now just let it go and find the next trade where in this case you would have just waited for nvidia you would have done great on that one now if it drops below five percent also let it go okay now right here it says you know buy it at 151 for example if it drops to like 140 or 135 don't worry about it let it go okay watch what i do and then follow me from there all right but there's no reason that you have to quit out on a play just because you didn't get the exact same price also there's no reason to trade every trade that i do there's a lot of people in the group so i try to trade pretty often but a lot of times especially in recent times because the market's been so hard you'll see that I only play very, very little, all right? So that's it's not always the best decision to trade every single play that I'm trying to make in this case, all right? 
also, on top of that, as a trader, you don't want to trade every day. Trading every day is not fun. Guys, trading is hard, okay? It's not easy for me as well, all right? I've been trading for 12 years and I still don't find it easy. You wouldn't want to trade every day. It's just too stressful, okay? The better thing to do always is to just pick two or three days out of the week that you normally trade. If it was up to me, I would do like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, just those two days. You don't need to trade every day, okay? No one's holding a gun to your head telling you to make $10,000 today, all right? Promise you that is not your situation. The best thing to do is to be very strategic with what days you're picking to trade and don't trade every day. Over trading is a profit killer. Please do not over trade. You definitely don't need to do it every day. We spoke about margin accounts. Make sure that's what you're on. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to trade these beautiful spreads that you see me enter. For example, yesterday, we entered one here at 160. We got out at 210, which was the first take profit that we see here. And then we got out at 235, which is the second take profit that you see here. Okay, very easy to enter. You'll only be able to trade these with a margin account. Okay, we also talked about getting in. Now with spreads, it's a lot easier to get in at my price. You shouldn't find a real issue, but same thing, plus or minus 5%. Don't trade every day. You don't need to. These are very, very important points here. Not specifically under the topic of this video as a whole, but just things that I think should be brought up. All right. I'll catch you guys on the next part of the Monetary Incubator series.